Hey everybody, we're back with another Cabral house call. First house call of the weekend. Can't wait to get into our community's questions. Each and every weekend, we're answering at least five to six of the community's questions each day, about 10 to 12 total. Usually we're about 12 weeks uh, in the queue of questions that have come in, but lately we're answering, so right now we're answering questions from 118, January 18th, uh, and yes, this is not coming out until March 9th, but that's not bad. I mean, that's really like, that's seven weeks, and usually we're around 12, so we're doing well. I uh, just wanna let you know that if you asked your question before 118, it's already been answered, and all of those shows can be found at stephencabral.com slash podcasts. And whatever your keyword is, whatever your topic was, just type it right in that search box. Or if you can't find the show, write in at cabralsupportgroup.com. We will answer your questions pretty much same day and help you find that show as well. All right, so let's dive right into it. All questions, wellness, weight loss, weight gain, anti-aging, longevity, high performance health, you name it, we're gonna tackle it as long as it has to do within the health-based realm because I can't give you any tax information, financial advice or anything like that. I'm not qualified, I don't know anything about that, but what I can do is help you at least on the health-based front. All right, so let's dive in. First question's from Bree. Bree says, hello, I have a friend who was recently diagnosed with MGUS, M-G-U-S, uh, monoclonal gamma, gamma, gammopathy, a condition in which atypical protein is found in the blood and you have an increased risk of cancer in the future. If this were you, what would you do or what path would you start to look at? Okay, understood. So, um, I know this exact condition. This is not, I'm not an expert in oncology, uh, but of course we do a lot for the underlying root causes and to help in, in cancer-based support. So how can I help with this? All right, so just keeping in mind that monoclonal gammopathy, uh, it, yes, you have a slight in, you have a slightly greater increased risk for certain types of cancer, and that would be a myeloma. And so when we look at this, one, we're running our blood work every six months, so that's what we do. And that just basically keeps an eye on things, but really what you wanna do is we wanna look at the balance in the body of overall health, omega-6s to omega-3s. We want to look at our gut health. We want to look at our heavy metals. We want to look at our vitamin levels with methyl donors. They can find that on the Candida Metabolic and Vitamins Test. And we want to look at our, I just said it, but basically minerals and heavy metals. So we ideally want to run a big five. We want to run that once to maybe twice a year. Maintain balance within the body. I would be doing some lymphatic base work. Um, I've talked about it before, talk about it in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, uh, the five Tibetans, or just some like a, a yoga asana uh, to start your day, get that lymphatic system moving. You can even jump on a rebounder, but I like the yoga asana, uh, the sun salutation, which I have a podcast on that. They're, again, these are all free. What else can I share with you? A detox every 12 weeks, just the seven day quarterly detox that we do at Equal Life, um, giving yourself the nutrients you need with like a daily foundational protocol level two uh, to level three. I would be using potentially on and off of like proteolytic enzymes. Again, this is not obviously medical advice. I can't give you medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, medical diagnosis. And I'd be using a sauna, you know, plus my walking. So I wouldn't get, I wouldn't get overly, and I certainly wouldn't stress out about this. I really wouldn't because it's a slightly increased chance, not a definite chance, slightly increased from the regular average individual. So if you're doing the right things, you're using intermittent fasting, you're using the anti-inflammatory diet, you know, we can't stress, we can't worry about these things. All right. But it's good, but it's not good not to ignore it either. So you want to live the healthiest lifestyle possible. All right. Alicia's up next. Alicia says, a holistic chiropractor informed us that our six-year-old son has a hiatal hernia. His symptom is a cough at night after he's been asleep for about an hour that eventually progresses to him throwing up. Yeah, I understand this. Um, yeah, we've worked with this many times. Okay. After that, he's able to return to sleep. This used to happen a few times a year, and now it's just been once so far this winter. Please explain what a hiatal hernia is. If this is common in children, how we can help him. Yeah, it's not, it's not that it's common, but it's also not uncommon. So all a hiatal hernia is, let me grab my buddy Walter here. So if you're watching this on video, if you're supporting us on YouTube, we love that. We're trying to grow the YouTube-based community. So please do subscribe. If you watch us there, we love that support. So let me get rid of the lungs here on our buddy, Walter. 
And he's been with me now 14 years. I've had many Walters, but this is a Walter for 14 years. So we're, we're swallowing the food down. Uh, let's get rid of the heart here to the esophagus. All right, so this is the bottom of the esophagus and it connects, we'll move the liver out of the way, right to this stomach. So you can see it here, all right? Right that stomach. Okay, so we have the esophagus and we have the stomach. Part of the stomach begins to protrude through the actual diaphragm like that you breathe in and out from. And why that's important, that explanation, is that when your son lies down at night, the uh, reflux is easier to come up, right? That hiatal hernia, that esophagus opening, it's called the lower esophageal sphincter, it's just easier for that acid to come up. And so, Propping the head up, and it's not the end all be all, but propping the head up just a little bit helps to keep that acid down, just kind of using gravity. That's, that's a big part of it. Um, but the second, is, the second is this. So one, we want to make sure that your son doesn't need too close to bed. Okay, that's an important one. The second is that they might even use a little bit of a digestive aid at six years old, they could use a digestive enzyme or they could use maybe a little bit. Um, I want to be cautious with ginger tea because it could sometimes move up a little bit of acid. So we might use a peppermint tea um, after dinner. That could be a nice one. Your son may enjoy that. Um, even a little chamomile with maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit of Manuka honey. Um, that could be okay. But the peppermint I think would be a little bit better. A couple hours away from bed. Again, we want to finish that meal up. And then what we want to do is we don't have to do it yet because I will let you know and I, I, want, I have to move on from this question, but um, children can outgrow a hiatal hernia. Adults, not, not usually as much, but children, it can happen. It often does happen. What I would do is I would look at if there's any other gut health-based issues and maybe how severe it is of a hiatal hernia. The only way that you truly know how severe it is is really with like an endoscopy. Um, they base, It's going to kind of sound like a lot, but they'll, your son will swallow a microscopic camera. Obviously, it's done in a GI um, specialist office, and they'll get to see how severe it may be if there's is maybe even something like H. pylori uh, that might need to be fixed as well. All right. So that's where to start. Hopefully that's helpful. And, uh, and then we can go from there. And again, if there's a, you want to start with mastic gum or healthy belly, that dinner, that can be helpful potentially as well. All right. All right. Uh, this one's from HC. It says, hello, Dr. Brawl. Thank you for all you do for your community. I appreciate your selflessness and commitment to inform us on real truths on healing. Thank you. Appreciate that, HC. Uh, do you have any knowledge of the antioxidant carbon 60? I've been looking at a product and would appreciate your feedback. Thank you for all you do. All right. Uh, I have not even talked about uh, carbon 60 for a long while. So let's just look over here. I don't usually do this, but let's go to stephencabral.com slash podcasts. Let's use that search box and let's type in carbon 60. All right. Carbon 60. There it is, episode 1577. All right, HC, your question has been answered at 1577. So go directly to stephencabral.com slash 1577. You'll get my thoughts on that. It is not one that I use in my practice, but I give you my, my unbiased thoughts on it. Um, certainly don't necessarily think that it's harmful, but not one that I use. I have a hierarchy of nutritional supplements, basically. There's four tiers. There's the ones that your body absolutely needs, right? Those are the nutrients that your body's made out of. Okay, there's that. Then the second tier is, this is what helps those nutrients get absorbed to a greater degree and make you a better, healthy, functionally, functioning individual. Then tier three is more specialty-based, um, meaning like more herbal-based. So maybe it's an adrenal soothe for stress. Maybe it's the sleep help uh, support for getting to sleep easier, those types of nutrients. And then tier four is more of the anti-aging, the ones that we know could be great, we want more research on them, but they show a lot of promise, right? So that's kind of how I do it. And so for me, carbon 60, even though it's not necessarily anti-aging, that would be more in a level three towards level four. So what does that mean? Well, you need to use really all of the level one, level two first, because you know why would you use go way down low to these when you might not be getting all of your methylated Bs, your you know superfood antioxidants, your omega-3s, your vitamin D, your zinc, like magnesium, the things that your body really needs, okay? Hopefully that's helpful. All right. 
Let's see what Heather's up next. Hey doc, thanks as always for taking the time to answer our questions. Could you talk more in depth about Bose lines, the horizontal dents in nails that make them look warped? I listened to your podcast on nails and you briefly mentioned these lines mean digestive based issues. I've gone through the CBO protocol and gut finisher, did a food sensitivity test and confirmed I only have moderate sensitivity to rye and miso. The Bose lines weren't something I noticed until recently when they started appearing on my fingernails, but now I realize I've had them on my toenails for quite some time. Otherwise, I would have brought it up to my health coach at the time I was working through the CBO. Thanks again. Okay. Yeah. Happy to help with this. So here's what I want you to think about. They can be caused, yes, by digestive-based issues. They can be caused by psoriasis. They can be caused by imbalanced blood sugar, like with diabetes. They can be caused by poor blood flow to the hands, sometimes with rainids, and they also can be caused by an infection. So kind of much more in depth there. Definitely, I know you tuned into my, you know, what your nails uh, say about you episode, which is great. But um, yeah, that's, that's essentially all the different reasons. I don't know which one of those reasons could be it for you, but it could be anything from the blood flow to the blood sugar, to the digestion, to the psoriasis, which is more autoimmune. So Whatever it is, again, we run the big five. It sounds like you may have done that. And we keep working on what are the underlying root cause balances and then fix that. I had, you, you can't see them anymore, but on this fingernail, until my early to mid thirties, I had a dark black line, a dark black line. Slight on the left one, pronounced on the right ring finger. And usually that means cardiovascular issues. Now, could it mean there, there was an infection there under the nail? Could it mean, um, like it can also mean that there's um, like a skin cancer, different types like that. I, you know, no one, they can't look at that specifically because when I go in for a scan, like everything looks good, right? But um, this went away. Like that's the remarkable thing. And so I had the bow lines as well. Oh, it can mean zinc deficiency too. So the white dots in your nails can mean a zinc deficiency, sometimes selenium. Um, I definitely had zinc deficiency. I had all sorts of white uh, dots on my fingernails. Uh, learned about that in my late twenties, got rid of that. Uh, but had those dents and I had those black lines and uh, you know, fortunately uh, they're all gone now. And so again, keep working the underlying root cause. All right, let's see. Let's, uh, let's do one more question. This one's from Sienna. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I'm 47 year old female. Would love to do a three day water fast for health benefits, but without messing up my hormones and losing muscle, what would be the best way to approach this? Thanks so much for your answer. Okay. So I've done a bunch of shows on water fasting now, and I want to get you on really quick if I can. Uh, let's see. Let's see. If not, I'm going to have you just ask at cabralsupportgroup.com, and they are going to find the water fast episodes. Uh, or of course, you can just search at stephencabral.com. See if I can find it quick though, because what I talk to people about is my water. Yeah, there we go. So uh, my 14 day fast key takeaways. That was episode 2841. All right. So everything is at stephencabral.com slash 2841. But I want you to think about this. If you have not done at least three to four functional medicine detoxes first, that's the place to start. Don't go full water fast where you don't support your body at all, right? You, I have no problem with the water fast, but first do a detox that's, yes, it's basically liquid fasting, but giving you the nutrients. So it's like a water fast, but far less painful, far less side effects, far less muscle loss, far less hormone-based issues, far less thyroid issues. So um, you can find the one that we've been using in our practice for many, many years. That's at stephencabral.com slash detox. Hundreds of thousands of people have used that. Uh, it's just safer. It's easier. It's just as effective. And then if you choose to, after doing three or four or more of those, you can certainly try a water fast if you feel that that's a calling um, to you. All right. So hopefully that was helpful, everybody. Thanks so much. I'll be back tomorrow, right back, answering more of our community's questions. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.